So here we are at Spencerport High School. We're going to be showing you how to use a Mach 3 CNC router. Um, this is the machine that we use on a consistent basis to produce parts for our robots for the FRC and FTC teams here at Spencerport. Um, this machine is a pretty robust machine and you can actually buy this as a DIY kit online. Um, it is made out of a bunch of 8020 extrusions and iterations off of that and it uses a Makita hand trim router right here. It has a really robust steel and aluminum gantry system and it can process wood, metal, and plastics really easily. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do some basic setup and attach pieces to the bed of the machine. The first thing we're going to need to do is to plug into the computer the USB that we saved our file. Our computer is not connected to the internet in here. Um, so we have to save everything onto a USB which is attached to the computer. So now the next thing we are going to need to do is actually load our CNC G code file into the computer. So we're going to hit load G code and we're going to hit my computer. Okay? We're going to hit my computer and then you're going to find your USB that you're using and you're going to find the file that we made in Autodesk Fusion 360. That file saved as a .tap file, so if you're having trouble trying to find your files, you can hit .tap or all files .nc. It's all according to which type of file you save. I'm going to hit .tap, and there's sidewall A. Okay, and now we are going to load it. And so now if you look up onto the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you can see that the profile of which the part that we are making is loaded and you can see right up here that in the left hand corner that the file is set to position one on the machine. So now what we are going to do is actually set the piece up on the machine. Okay, so now we are going to put our piece onto the machine. So right now we are going to be processing, processing high density polyethylene. Okay, and this is a plastic that we use for the robotics team here. Um, it's a pretty robust plastic um, and it machines pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I have these things called bench dogs on the machine and if you look on the machine, there, there, there are these regular holes that are um, drilled out at about every three to four inches from each other. Okay, and at the bottom we have a T-nut that goes underneath on this piece of MDF. And that is threaded, and then we thread a 832 bolt into that um, T-nut so then we can actually clamp our work onto the MDF. Now for more irregular shapes, things that are harder to clamp down, we actually have screwed these in. We drill a hole and countersink it before we put the screw into the piece. Um, but this allows us to clamp down our pieces without drilling sometimes. So it all depends on what type of piece of material you're using. Now if you look at these um, bench dogs, they are a piece of oak that has been machined to be a cantilever on one side and it, this side rests against the piece and then this bottom of the carriage bolt rests against the MDF and then you put your 832 bolt through there and you screw it into the T-nuts that we have drilled into the MDF. Okay, so the operating procedure will be first square up your piece of plastic onto the machine. I like to just find two points 
on the left and right hand side. So I'm lining these up with this grid line that's printed onto the MDF. And then I know that it's square along the X axis. And then the Y axis, I just lined up directly to the left hand side here. And now I know that's relatively square. If I was trying to square something up more precisely, I may use an actual square and square it to the edge of the MDF here, measure it. Um, but for this piece, I'm, I have enough tolerance on each side to allow from, for some variation left and right uh, and up and down. Okay. Now I'm just placing my bench dogs onto the machine and tightening these down nice and tight. So now our piece is tightened onto the machine. Okay? And now what I'm going to show you how to do is square, or excuse me, set the origin of the machine. Okay, so now we have zoomed in a little bit here and got a little closer to the piece. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my origin right where the tip of my finger is, right here, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, regular computer paper, and I am going to, um, I am going to zero my mark, my tip of my bit, right where my pen is pen mark right is right is right there okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit shift and I'm using the arrow keys so I'm hitting shift and I'm pushing the down arrow and moving the machine over all the way until it's hovering over our piece Okay, and now I'm going to hit page down for the Z axis. Okay, so page down for Z axis, page up for Z axis up, page down for Z axis down. I'm hitting the left hand arrow right now to go to the left. I'm going to hit the page or the down arrow to go closer to me for Y. Okay. And now I'm hitting page down without shift, and that's going to be my step mode, okay? So I'm actually going to bring you down here, okay? So you can see this a little better, okay? So what I'm doing, I'm going to focus the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So you see how there's a little bit of gap right there? We don't want that, so I'm going to slowly step it down. Again, I'm hitting page down, no shift key this time. That, when you hit shift, it goes super fast. But if I hit just page down or arrow left or arrow right, it goes slow. And right now, I am going to move my piece of paper in and out until it just barely catches. OK? So just call it right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tap page up once, tap, tap page up twice, and there we go. So. If you look right in the center here, right here, X, Y, Z, okay? That is where we're going to set our origins for the machine, okay? Since we are just doing one part, we're going to set one origin for right now, okay? So I'm going to hit zero X. So what that has done, it's zeroed the machine left and right when you're facing towards it, okay? Now I'm going to hit zero Y. That has zeroed the machine front to back when you're facing towards it. Okay? And zero Z. And now I have set the height dimension. So now when I come back down here onto our machine here, that point right there, you see the bit? That's our origin. Our machine now is referencing that part as the origin of 
the machine, okay, and now it's going to process the part and it will return back to that origin once the part is complete cutting, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press play on the machine, which is cycle start right here. Cycle start, that green button right there. That is how our machine will get started, okay? So I'm gonna hit th that after I turn on the router, okay? And then I'll let it run. Now some things to talk about before we get started when we're using this machine. If you look at the keyboard, escape is your off switch. Okay, if you run into any problems when this job is running, you hit escape. Or you could hit stop, the red button, if you're using the mouse at a given moment. But the easiest thing to do is just hit escape on the keyboard and it'll automatically shut the, the part down. Okay? Now, when you do that, it will not start again. It shuts the machine completely off. Okay? So you absolutely have to hit that button and then you have to reload the program you'll probably have to put a new piece of material in you won't be able to, to machine what you just started unless you can origin or zero the thing back to the origin you had originally but that's very difficult to do so anytime you have to escape or shut down a job immediately you're probably not going to get to save that work okay now some other tricks here we're going to come over to the dry vac or excuse me, our vacuum. Okay, the on off switch is down here. Okay, we have to turn this vacuum on before we even start using the machine. As you can tell, it's loud. Okay, so we're gonna come back over here. What we're gonna do, there's an on off switch right here. Okay, we're gonna turn it on. machine is running. So now it's going to go to its start point in the file and it's going to start cutting. Now I have a little bit of a lead in so it's going to take about a couple of inches for it to cut into the material. Okay but now it's cutting into the material and it'll start doing its thing. So I'm going to zoom out now and let this thing run. Okay, so there is our final product made on the CNC router. Um, it is going to be some storage boxes for a cabinet we have here in the technology lab. So um, we'll be making a ton more of these to put in that cabinet to store tools and everyday objects.